Hello everyone, and we're you're back with Real Time, where we talk about the movies we like. And the ones we don't. I'm Tyler. And I'm Molly. And so far, we've uh, mostly been covering movies that we do like. For the most part, I think. Because, you know, why would we want to watch something we don't like? Good question. But, you know, since that is part of, uh, you know, part of our intro. Our tagline, yeah. Yeah. Well, I figured, let's watch something that uh, we really don't like. Mm-hmm. So I decided The Last Airbender, you know, the infamously horrible adaptation of the first season of the beloved Nickelodeon show Avatar The Last Airbender. Yep. And, uh, so I saw this movie back when it came out, back in 2010, Mm -hmm. and, um, yeah, that was one of the first movies that, when when I saw it in the theaters and I came out, I was just... In the mindset of, wow, that was, that, that, that was really bad. <laughs> and uh, so part of me was uh, maybe hoping that, okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe there's something to salvage from it. No, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, I didn't watch this movie. Well, I didn't watch Avatar, the TV show, until I married you. Well, we, we, we were dating when I, when I showed you it. Oh. Really? I felt like it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, so, yeah, so I, I watched it when, you know, after I met you, and it wasn't until later, it wasn't until after we were married then that you showed me the movie. Yeah, like, we tried to watch it from, uh, we tried to borrow it from the local library, uh, but the DVD was scratched, so we didn't, we didn't finish it. Yeah. But uh, today, we finally we're, watched it all the way We through. are recording this right after we finished the movie, and... Mm-hmm. God, this this is just awful. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely horrible. Mm -hmm. But, um, before we get into all that, this movie stars Noah Ringer as Aang, or as the movie likes to call him, Ong. I don't know why. Yeah, they mispronounce a lot of things. They, they like, rearrange, they like... For some reason, changed the pronunciation of a lot of names. Even though they, they said it fine in the, in the TV, TV show. show. I don't know why. Oh well. But you know, I mean, supposedly going. that was to make it more authentically Asian sounding. Okay. If they did it in the show, uh, just keep the same. That's De- just how it's pronounced. Anyways. Anyways. Dev Patel as Prince Zuko, and. We're gonna get into this later with the uh, when we talk about the few good parts of this movie, but this wasn't the, the this wasn't the so bad honestly. Dev Patel is Zuko. Yeah, I guess compared to the others. <laughs> yeah, I mean Dev Patel is a, a great actor. We've seen his his work before, and you know so him in this movie kind of makes it a smidge better. Nicola Peltz as Katara. Now, this isn't speculative. This is just, you know, straight up known. Uh, her dad was, uh, well, her dad made it so that she got into this movie. You know, he was this uh, rich Hollywood executive, so, so he he wants his uh he wants his little girl in the movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, so she's white. She's playing a. Uh, uh, you know, an Inuit character. You know, that character is based on Inuit culture. Yeah. So, naturally, that meant, okay, uh, Sokka has to be white, too. Yeah, and their grandma has to be white. Enter Jackson Rathbone as Sokka, or as they like to call him, Soka. Jeez, mm-hmm. why, why? I don't know. And, now, if you look at the Northern Water Tribe, where, uh, where their grandma's from... Mm-hmm. You know, they're all white there. So it makes a little bit more sense that, you know, Sokka and Katara would be white. But that also begs the question, why is the Northern Water Tribe white? They're supposed to be based off the same Inuit culture as the Southern Water Tribe. So it makes no sense. Why? Why are you white? Why is Aang white? The, the only people of color in this movie are really the, the Fire Nation, the bad guys. Now, I'm not going to be the one that says, you know, this movie is racist because only p- people of color are bad guys, but 
it, but that's kind of it's it's a little weird to see. Yeah. I don't think it was a, necessarily a race thing because the director, writer, producer, guy who made this whole movie, and Night Shyamalan, is Indian. So I don't think he was, I don't think he was being racist by doing it. Now maybe the studio executives were, but. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Sean Tobe plays Uncle Iroh, and again with the with the the Patel Zuko. He's not bad in this movie, honestly. He's he's a bit more closer to his character than all everyone else is. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's still not great, but it's an attempt at least. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Asif Manji as Commander Zhao. This guy is so stupid in this movie. Like, yeah, Zhao in in the original show, he was kind of a, he, he, you know, he was kind of a bumbling guy, but he he the show took him seriously. Yeah. You know, he was a credible threat sometimes. Mm-hmm. This guy is just completely stupid. Yeah. I, we'll, we'll get into the characterization later, but I, I just couldn't. <laughs> uh, okay, Cliff Curtis plays Fire Lord Ozai. Now, Cliff Curtis recently appeared in Avatar The Way of Water as the chief of the tribe that Jake Sully and his family go to. I, I, I just want, want, want to say that because he was great there, but he's not great here. <laughs> Uh, Seychelles Gabriel, remember that name, plays Princess Yue, the the princess of the Northern Water Tribe with penis hair. Literally, in her first scene, her hair looks like a penis. It does. It's, yeah. It's just straight Pretty up obvious. a penis. Okay, that's that's most of the main cast. That's... So, so. before I go into the rest of this, uh, my rant, <laughs> I... Oh. I'd like to say that Avatar might be my favorite show of all time. Just the characters, the world, the story, everything about this show is absolutely perfect. The story arcs everyone goes in. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, look at look at Zuko. He's been he, he's been known to have one of the best character arcs in all of fiction. Yeah, you know, just his, his journey is absolutely pitch perfect and I would not have him any other way now <laughs> now that you know all this yeah. let's uh let's get into the rant okay so <laughs> Aang in, in the show he's a he's a pretty fun loving kid he's mm-hmm. he's nice to a fault very naive but yeah. like well he's a kid yeah he's a kid he's 12 years old yeah. here he's strangely Serious? He's strangely it's it's that, but also he has like no character. Kind of dull. Yeah. He's very dull. He's he's like white bread, stale white bread yeah. with um. That's no just been with that's just been frozen. There yeah. is nothing to this kid that I remember other than how dull he was. Now, the they before this movie, Noah Ringer wasn't an actor. He was a dancer, hmm. but. And this isn't necessarily a him problem entirely because M. Night Shyamalan has a talent of making uh, g- good actors act like complete idiots. Yeah. Just look at um, uh, look at Signs or The Happening or uh, After Earth or Lady in the Water. It's, he, it's kind of a problem with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of the characters' dialogue and the way they act is just very dull. It's very dull. It's... A lot of the dialogue in this movie is what, is what I like to call no shit dialogue, where it's like they say things that is just blatantly obvious to anyone with eyes. <laughs> like, at one point, Annie's talking to this uh, dragon, and he says that if the Fire Nation attacks the North, it'll cause more pain and suffering. No, really? It will? I can't imagine it would do that. And then you have Katara and Sokka, who are the biggest wet blankets I have ever seen. Yeah. Okay, Katara... Look, in, in the show, they made fun of her for all, like, being all full of hope and stuff, and, you know, stuff like that, but... And and she was a very motherly character, you know? She's the she's the mom of Team Avatar. Yeah. You know, she's the one keeping everyone from going off and doing what they want and just being idiots, but, you know, she's a, a very responsible and a very fun character at the same time, too. Sokka, he's one of the he's funniest like, guys yeah, on the show. He's one of my favorite characters you know, on the show. I, I love Sokka on yeah. the show. And 
in addition to Zuko, he has a pretty good uh, character arc too, going from a pretty sexist jerk to uh, learning that okay, maybe um, m m maybe women are good for something, <laughs> and uh, just generally finding his place in this group when when he thinks he has n no purpose, he learns to, he learns a sword fight, and here he's just he's just an idiot. Like we're told. He and the princess became friends right away. Yeah, we're told that. Yeah. We don't actually see them they have many scenes together. They actually tell us instead of showing us. That's like the number one rule of storytelling is to show. Show, don't, don't tell. tell. I think they have maybe <laughs> they, three scenes together. They sure do tell. Maybe four or five. Mm -hmm. It's They don't do a whole lot together. Yeah, no. These people are... Which... Mm. I understand for a movie you need to cut down on a lot of things, they, but you I, do, feel yeah. like, I feel like they cut down on the wrong things a lot. Now, the, the reason why this movie did get cut up so it did, mm -hmm. is because um, a, another movie, the, the previous year came out, it was also called Avatar, you, you may not have heard of it, but uh, <laughs> even though I just talked about its sequel, <laughs> but you know, it revolutionized uh, 3D um, movie experiences and stuff, mm -hmm. and so um, this the you know, Paramount saw this movie, saw that what, what that what that movie did, and thought, man, we want to make our movie all three D and pretty like that too. So they had to cut down, uh, they had to cut a lot of scenes because they in order to um, uh, convert the movie to three D, a, a shorter movie works for that. So you have to do do less work to do it. Well. It takes a while to convert it to 3D. Yeah. So a shorter movie is more beneficial. Mm. And they didn't want to, you know, push the movie back, so they decided to cut scenes, which really shows in this movie because there's just parts where people like in like in the middle of conversations just it just cuts to a different thing, and it's yeah. it's really jarring. Mm -hmm. And there's this other part where we just get a long. Um, you know, shot of a field while Zhao and, and Ozai are talking, and we don't see them for a good like 10 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. Wh why? Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, where were we? Anyways. Okay, Zuko. He's not bad in this movie, honestly. You know, he's not great, but. It could be better, yeah. He's better than pretty much every other character, except his Uncle Iroh, who's pretty much on the same level as Zuko. Let's just talk about him, too, because Zuko and Iroh in this movie, there are problems. Like, some of the dialogue he has, like, at one point he's in, in this Fire Nation colony and asks, has to bring this kid over here to exposit his own backstory for yeah. us. That, why did you yeah, need to do it like that? That was very dumb. That was so stupid. Um, and, go ahead, sorry. And, I said, um, but I didn't have anything to say. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> and... But generally speaking, these two do work together. We, there's this a uh, there's a sense that Iroh does care about Zuko as yeah, his own son. Yeah, you can see that. I will say that. Yeah. So these two are not as much of a problem as everyone yeah. else. I do have sl a slight problem with Uncle Uncle Iroh, but I think that's because he's like my favorite character <laughs> in the TV show. So I want I expected a lot from him from the movie, but. He doesn't mention T once. Well, he does. Does he? Yeah, when uh, right when uh, Zuko gets back from uh, uh, tr trying to kidnap Aang, he says that uh, you know, ha have some rest, and then we'll have some tea. Mm, not not as much. Uncle Iroh in the show would have mentioned T like seven times at <laughs> least. Um, all right. Uh, and I just wasn't paying attention, I guess. <laughs> It's hard to pay attention to the movie. But, yeah, you do get the sense that Iroh does like Zuko as a son. Yeah, you, you can see that. But there's also another thing. They call him Iro. Not, yeah. not I. Why are you messing up these names? This is not I needed. I don't know. I don't get it. And Aang is called the Avatar. What? Avatar. Oh, Avatar. You, you people. I don't know. But... Yeah, Zuko and, and Iroh could have been done better, but they were... Compared to the rest, pretty okay. Yeah, like... Decent. They match up to their show counterpart the, the best. Mm -hmm. And Zuko in, in this movie, 
Like, in season one, he was kind of a, an angry, whiny jerk. We do get that in this movie. Yeah. So, the characterization is there. Yeah, because it does take Zuko a while before... I mean, his character arc goes through the entire show, so it takes, you know... Yeah, it's not an overnight thing. Yeah, yeah, it takes a while. My, my only problem is... The, the way they did Zuko's backstory was so much better in the show. Yes. You know... Uh, Iroh needs to, uh, you know, let these uh, other uh, sailors on Zuko's ship know, you know, that they're kind of misinformed about him, that mm -hmm. you know how, what he's really about, and yeah. just the way they did it in, on that show. Like, the the storm is one of my favorite episodes of Avatar, and to see it just reduced to a minute in this movie mm -hmm. it really kind of rubbed me the wrong way, <laughs> and they I can tell. they really only focus on the Zuko end of it. And not very well. Yeah. You know? And, and yeah, it's his uh, backstory in this movie does match up with the show, more or less. Yeah. yeah. But it's just the way they portrayed it, it's just, it just was so dumb. But the uh, uh, Azula's cameo in that scene, that was, kind of, that was kind of neat, though. It just showed her laughing at her father about to... Yeah. Absolutely mutilate his, her older brother. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. If that I'm is accurate. Correctly, that's what happened in the TV show. But another thing, Z Zuko isn't so much uh, you know burnt. He, yeah. he he looks more like he, his, his scar is not that noticeable. Yeah, he he looks more like he had a bad sunburn or just a bad rash or something. Mm -hmm. he, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't not gel with what we see in the show. <laughs> And I know as an adaptation, it it's going to do some things different, but yeah. if it's doing so many things different in a bad way, I, I can't abide by that. <laughs> oh. Anyways. Um, okay, Zhao and Ozai. Yeah, Zhao's an idiot here. He's He has to be told by Ozai, hey, go to the water tri Northern Water Tribe, kill the ocean or the moon spear. Just go do that. When... In the show, Zhao figured it out for himself. Yeah. And he was an actual credible threat to these people sometimes. He, yes, he, he captured Aang here, but that was, that didn't seem as impressive as him, as Aang getting captured by those, uh, by, by the Yuyan archers, pinning him to the logs and getting, you know, taking him to, to Zhao. Mm -hmm. You know, here, him getting captured, just like, oh, yeah, he'll, he'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> this, this doesn't seem so bad. In the show, it's legitimately, you, you know, when I, you, you, you're not sure that, that he's going to get out. I mean, if you've seen the show, you know he gets out, but, yeah. you know, it's... It adds, you know, it's a higher stakes in the show. Yeah, there's more tension, because he has to, also has to get these frogs back to Katara and Sokka to suck on so they feel better. Okay, the show's a little weird, but... <laughs> it makes sense. Yeah, it makes sense in context. <laughs> yeah. Ah, and Ozai, we see his face way too many times. Like, in his first scene, he's just walking through, through the hall. And we see, oh, that's that's Ozai. I see, that's how we're doing it. But later on, they have a scene where Zhao's talking to Ozai, and we, we only see his back and, like, his hand with his Fire Nation ring. You know, the way they shot that, okay, that's fine. Mm -hmm. But why is this, why are you doing this after we already seen his face? Why aren't you doing this for the whole movie with Ozai. Yeah. <sighs> but th probably the the worst part of this entire movie. Mm, I think we both agreed while watching it. Yeah. yeah. Is the part where um Aang, Sokka and Katara get they they meet this young earthbending boy who I'm going to assume is Haru. Yeah, I think you you can assume that. You know, and they get Taken to a, taken to a, a, a Fire Nation prison for Earthbenders. Now, in the in the sh in the show, uh, okay, so um, Haru gets captured by the Fire Nation after he gets ratted out by this old man for Earthbending, an old man that he saved too, mind you. So that guy's just a jerk. Yeah. And he gets taken out to the middle of the ocean on this giant metal rig, no connection to Earth at all. That's where the prison is. Yeah, that's where the prison is. And Katara gets herself, you know, pretending to earthbend so she can go break him and everyone out. Okay, this is cool. And 
when uh, they, when Sokka and Aang go, uh, go to get Katara out, they realize that you know this place runs on coal, coal is earth, so what they what they sh could do is get the coal out there er, among the prisoners so that they can actually fight back against the Firebenders. Mm -hmm. Now they do this, and at first. The, you know, the Earthbenders don't want to do it. Their spirits have been broken and beaten down to the point where they're just going to wait this out, wait the war out, and when they get home, they get home. So it makes sense that they that they don't do anything at first. Mm -hmm. Now, eventually, they do, of course, and they um, they get out. the 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 prison that they get taken to in this movie is uh in the middle of a forest, mm -hmm. in the middle of, of this, like. Uh, you know, just a very rocky and earthy terrain. Yeah, it's just, it's just, it's earth just, and dirt. There's earth and, rocks. and dirt and rocks all around them. Everything and they do they could nothing. Use. They do absolutely yeah, nothing until like, Aang tells them, "Hey, you guys are earthbenders. Get out!" It's like they're like, "Oh yeah, you know what? We are. We can actually, you know, control Earth." I'm, I forgot. I'm not sure who's stupider. The Earth. The, the, the firebenders for keeping them in an earth-based prison or the earthbenders for not doing anything yeah. at all it's, yeah and then and then and then we have like six guys to to move one rock to hit and this it, one it's guy a small rock it's too. a small rock it's like the size of a shoe yeah. whereas it's and, like it, you could just throw it on the show it, it'd be faster if they did throw yeah. it on the show one earthbender one earthbender mind you can lift a, a rock the size of a friggin' house. Yeah. What is this? Mm, mm. <laughs> Come there's there's nothing. There's no there's no connection. Yeah, what is going really, on? I mean, I get they. I guess they didn't want to make a film set on a boat or something. They want to use the CGI for the sea or whatever. And then and then. This makes no sense. And then Go there's ahead. we have these people doing all sorts of, you know. You know, arms flailing around, motion stuff like that. You can't see me, but I'm doing it. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking like an idiot right now, to do, to, to, to bend their, their elements, like they're doing all these sorts of, you know, um, f Olympic floor routine stuff yeah. just to move a, a bit of water or yeah. to blow a bit of air yeah, whenever, or to in the show you just kind of just move your hand and it just like goes or to take fire from something else and, and use yeah. oh that's another thing the firebenders can't actually make fire mm -hmm. they have to use it from another source yeah and when and when Iroh oh when he actually makes fire on his own all the other firebenders so, are so scared and surprised that he's able to do this like yeah. no you are all supposed to be able to do that mm -hmm. and at the end when Ozai is talking about like Sozin's comet is going to let them make fire you are supposed to do that already. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. And then, and then, and then, and then. Okay. And then, when Aang's talking about how the when he be, when he was told that he was the Avatar, that you know he has to you know forsake all earthly possessions and stuff like that, and uh, not, and he can't have a family. No, 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 no. Avatars are allowed to have families. Ozai did. Not Ozai. Roku did it. I don't know why I said Ozai. That was weird. Roku did it. Kiyoshi did it. Yang, Yang Chen did it. Uh, Kirik did it. Multiple avatars had families. Aang did it. You know? So, this is not a thing where, like, y y you have to do that. Oh. This, this, this movie is... It's a bad movie. I think we can all agree. I really really hate this movie so much y you showed us yeah. it's <sighs> okay Are now a little bit a little bit because uh, okay I am going to talk about some good things okay well I already talked about Zuko and Iroh yeah. they're fine All right. I don't have ma very many complaints there what else Iroh could have been a little bit nicer but yeah you know what I'll take it we'll take it now uh, I told you to remember the name Seychelle Gabriel earlier. Mm -hmm. Now, um, neat thing about her is the uh, creators of Avatar, uh, they met her you know, during this movie, obviously. Yeah. 
Yeah. And later on, they uh, on the show Legend of Korra, she played Asami. Remind me who Asami was. Uh, she was the uh, the rich girl that okay that uh, the, the that that, that uh, Mako it's dated during while. season one. Yeah, I, I know. And then um, I, I, I get it, babe. And then later, Kakora and Asami ended up together at the I, end. I, I know. Okay, you know, you know, yeah, you know. know. It's just been a while since I watched it. So. Anyways, yeah. So she got to play Asami. Okay. That was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. It's like with it's like with the Dragon Ball Evolution movie. The the guy who played um, the main villain in the movie, King Piccolo, James Marsters. He later ended up playing uh, Zamasu on Dragon Ball Super later on. We'll get to that movie eventually, too, mind you. I don't know what I will say. But it's, it's and I can guarantee you, I'm probably going to get as upset as I did with this one. <laughs> There's no point in saying who our favorite characters or because favorite I scenes. I did not have any. Yeah, like, I could say Zuko or Iroh, but I don't want to. <laughs> like, the, the, any of the things that this movie did right or kind of cool... Like uh, the part when they go into the uh, uh, Northern Water Tribe city, and then the they f the the ice opens. The, the, the ice or, opens and closes. Yeah, yeah that was kind of neat, but that's th that's how it happened that in the show too. Show. So you can't take credit for that. Yeah. And uh, I guess Momo looked kind of cute. Appa yeah. was friggin' Appa cursed, was but I guess that's just an inevitability when you're tr translating this from cartoon to live action. Yeah. I actually had a thought. Uh, just gonna see something on this IMDb page, um, because I'm trying to see if D. Bradley Baker came back to do the the uh, Appa and Momo noises. It's entirely possible they did, because um, you know why not? He, he he's basically a modern day Frank Welker and doing animal voices and stuff. Um, not not seeing anything. You know what? It, it doesn't matter. He, he wouldn't want to be in that movie unless they paid him very well. Yeah. And favorite scenes doesn't make sense because I hate every scene in this movie. <laughs> it was so... It, it doesn't keep my attention. And, yeah, it's just so different from the show. It's not worth watching. Like, during narration at one point, Katara, you know, you know he's, she's saying Aang's name. And then, like... Five seconds later, she asked, "Oh, what's your name?" Yeah, and you didn't. That's another thing. You didn't ask his name this whole time. They, yeah, they don't find out Egg's name until they go to the air temple. That's like a good while into the movie. Like in in the show, we get his name literally his first scene. Yeah. You know, he wakes up. Do you want to go playing with something with me? Yeah. I'm Egg. Yeah. yeah, it's like any normal person would introduce themselves. But characters in Shyamalan movies are not normal people. That's true. They are the most boring people. The most boring, out there, weird people ever. <laughs> it's kind of astounding how he keeps doing it. Now, I, I don't want to, I don't want to crap on Shaman too much because, you know, I've heard he's a nice guy and he's done some good work. I do like his um, Unbreakable. Yeah. I like his Un Split. Unbreakable was good. Split, Split was, was good. actually I haven't seen Split, so I can't you say. You haven't anything. seen Split. Oh. Um, Glass was, it was okay. Yeah. I haven't seen old, um, no. but I haven't heard good things about um, that. Did uh, he do the visit? He did do the visit. I did like the visit. The visit was good. So there are some movies of his that I do the, actually really enjoy. The Sixth Sense was nice. Oh, I did. I did not see that one yet because yeah. I have heard too much about it. And <laughs> I already yeah. know what happens. Yeah, so. Bruce Willis is dead the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know um, he's done. He has he's good work. Some good movies. And even his, you know, not great movies like The Happening is. It's still fun to watch because we of how do bad the it is. Happening. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Um, we will do the happening at some point. Yeah. But. But yeah, but there are good movies that he's done. It just seems like it's either a hit or a miss with him. And at least some of his misses are still watchable. Yeah. Like again, the happening or signs, or um, after Earth. These are not good movies, but you get. You can you can laugh at them because of how bad they are. It's like the room, which we have to do that one too. Mm -hmm. But uh, this this Anyways. one just. To, I think I think we've made our point. We've made our point. This movie sucks. Yeah. yeah. Now this is gonna be our last 
video of the year, 2022. We will have uh, probably a video wrapping up our favorite movies of the year. We will. I still I'm, have a I'm few ready. more to watch. I'm ready to get my, uh, my list made. I think mine's not going to change with the movies we have left to watch. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, there's some movies that we're probably not going to get get around to, no. just because. Like, I, I didn't see Avatar. Tyler did. I did not. Which, because I didn't like the first Avatar, I know. And, uh, you know, stuff like The Fablemans or Tar, which I was interested in, but I didn't get the chance to see them. Yeah. Or that Triple R movie. Looked, mm -hmm. looked neat. Yeah. But I didn't just get to see it. Di didn't get to see it. So out of the movies we have seen, we will make a video yeah. judging them. I already know which one's my top one, so stay tuned to find out what movie I like the best this year. So, we've uh, we started this back in April ish. I can't quite remember when exactly we started uploading stuff. So, how do you think this uh, past year's gone? Okay. N Are you asking me? Yeah, I'm asking you. <laughs> well, it's been an experience. I, uh, you know, I'm just your your nice sidekick. Yeah. Giving you commentary while you do all the recording and the, the uploading, and I just I just go to the movies. You buy my movie ticket, and I go and sit next to you. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope you sit next to me. Yeah, I go sit somewhere else. I don't want to be seen with you. <laughs> now, now we, I started this channel because. Well, you gave me the, uh, the inspiration for it, really. Yeah, I said you needed a hobby. <laughs> I said you needed a hobby. Yeah. And, and you I, got tons of movies. I got tons of movies. Might as well put them to use. I'm really under no, you know, uh, delusions that this is going to be a, like, a big money-making thing for me. Or that I'm actually doing anything, you know, really great. I'm just doing this for fun. Just for fun. You know, it's just mm -hmm. a... Neat little thing to do, talk about movies, because I really like to watch movies. Yeah. You know, it's something I really enjoy doing, and if I can do something of really note with it, well, I doubt this is going to be of any note, but it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So, uh, the next movie we're going to do is going to be something similar to our fir very first movie. So... Uh -huh. We'll, uh, we'll catch you later. See you next time. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're, you're a dork. <laughs> also. Oh, there's another note. Yeah. Sorry. So. Premature next time. Premature next time. What I would like to do for next year is I want to, to uh, cover every single movie that I have on 4K. Now, if, you, if you've seen my collection, which not, not a lot of you have. I have. You have, yeah. I'm looking at it right now. It's it's quite a it's quite a bit. Yeah. So, we're gonna do our best to cover each of those movies in the, the coming year. Aside from ones we've already done, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay. Some of these like Black Panther or Jaws, we're just gonna skip over them because we've done them already. So, with that said, we'll catch you guys next time. See you next time, next year. Happy New Year.